Garth waved his hands in a circle and managed to erect a circle of protection from his opponent's onslaughts. Then he doubled the circle. Though he was doing no damage to his foe, at least his attacker was no longer damaging him. More undead appeared, but were repulsed by the screen. Then another strike towards his mana, but it was stopped as well. The captain now turned his attention toward the hornets, which were swarming towards him, and in an instant they fell to the ground, their power to fly drained away. Writhing about, they curled up and died. Oh, hello. Twenty-five years of Magic the Gathering is about to culminate in what will either be the ultimate Magic the Gathering set, reinvigorating the player base, saving standard, setting the tone for another quarter of a century of excellent gameplay and collectible cards, or perhaps the final dud nail in the dud coffin that signifies the end of an era, a point of no return. There's a lot riding on Dominaria, and I strongly believe this one set is make or break for a game that has seen better years. I too went into this prediction video at a crossroads. Do I present my pessimistic predictions or my optimistic ones? Do I have faith in the future or see more disappointment on the horizon? I choose hope. I believe Wizards of the Coast knows just how much is riding on this one set, and I see the shape of the game to come as a result. Presented here are my predictions for the new set, and in some ways the new philosophy of both Dominaria and Magic the Gathering. But first, let's see how I did last time. For Ixalan, I made a series of predictions and even doubled down with a double wager on my number one. So what do I predict for Ixalan? How about this for a start? No world in peril. I predict a return to tribal matters and tribal-based mechanics. We will see only one set on Dominaria, followed by three sets linked together on the same plane, and that this returning plane is going to be somewhere I'm going to call corporate safe. Uh, okay, so we don't know if this one is correct yet. I was right in calling at the time that Dominaria will just be one set, but there's no word on what the fall set will be and whether we will see three full sets on the same corporate safe plane as I predicted. It does seem to be hinting at a Ravnica return to return to. So, I still think we are going to see Dominaria followed by the core set, followed by a trilogy on, at this point, gonna say Ravnica, but for now, I neither gain nor lose a point on that prediction. And so prediction number four is that these mechanics in the set will be heavily tempo-based. And heck, a new investigate-like mechanic giving us, I don't know, gold ingots instead of clue tokens, but still based around card draw, would be very in flavor, don't you think? My number one prediction is one that has already bit me on the behind, but I am going to double down on it here. That's right, mark this as a double bet, meaning that if I lose, then I lose two points when I'm wrong, but if I'm right, I get two points if I'm correct. And that prediction is the return, yes, I'm saying it again, the return of colorless mana matters. <laughs> Okay, so negative two points there because they still did not bring back colorless mana, thank God. But leaving off my still unconfirmed or undenied prediction of the shape of sets to come, I still got three correct, which isn't too shabby. So what are my predictions for Dominaria? Well, I not only have confidence we are going to see these in the new set, but I feel that these predictions are critical points to hit. Not doing these things would, in my opinion, be an escalation of bad decision-making. 
Prediction number one, a bridge between the old storyline and the new. Connections between new walkers and old are going to occur in Dominaria. I expect to see Urza in some form, if only just a memory or a spirit guide. And Urza will be connected to Jace. We are going to see connections between not just the storylines, but new walkers and old. Chandra to Jaya. Nissa to probably Freilis. Nicole Bolas, I'm thinking a connection to Yogmoth. We'll see mirroring of new walkers and old, and we'll tie all the stories together. Now, I myself have poked fun in the past at how characters like Chandra and Nyssa are similar and reminiscent of characters like Jaya and Freilis, but I think that actually admitting and acknowledging that mirror between characters can serve the plot in a positive way. It can be the passing of the torch that we never really had, a way to say, yes, this is the next generation of walkers. They are going to carry the mantle that for so long was held up by characters like Jaya and Teferi. And I think that this is going to be a really nice way to bring everybody in Magic the Gathering, new players and old, new walkers and old, under the same tent. Prediction number two, as of the filming of this video, they have not even hinted at this, but I am going to say it right now, the return of masterpieces. And I think that these masterpieces will be the most famous and iconic cards from throughout Magic's history that are not on the reserve list. Reprinted with a border that is reminiscent of the original, foil possibly with a star, and some real power. Basically, this is going to be them cutting loose with masterpieces. They're gonna get it right this time. Printing cards like Sylvan Library, Caracas, Wasteland, cards players want and want to play, not just old cards like Bad Moon or Savannah Lions. And in many ways, I think that this return to masterpieces done right will be like a mini master set within the Dominaria set. All right, coming in at number three, I predict that the three planeswalkers that we saw in our first and only promotional image for Dominaria, the image containing Joyra, Teferi, and Karn, these three planeswalkers are the three planeswalkers that we're going to see cards of in this set. So yes, there are some still going to be Planeswalker cards in Dominaria, but I boldly predict that Wizards of the Coast is smart enough to one time, just one time, not have any new walkers as Planeswalker cards and bank on that nostalgia, commit to the idea of Dominaria for real, have faith in its player base, and offer us Joyra, Teferi, and Karn as the Planeswalkers of this set. This would be a really great move because of the fact that it would be refreshing. Just having Jace in Dominaria or having Chandra in Dominaria or even a Johnny, we've seen these Planeswalkers as cards before. We've seen it a million times and it means nothing. There's nothing special about it at this point. What are they gonna do? Give Jace a new hat? Let's see Teferi as a Planeswalker card. Let's see Karn as a new Planeswalker card. Card, one that doesn't break modern this time, and, but actually is good. Can you find that balance? Doesn't break modern, but is actually good, and so forth and so on. I think that this is what we're going to see in terms of the Planeswalkers, and I'm excited for it. Prediction number two, we are going to have a popularity contest of mechanics. What better way to celebrate 25 years than by investing design space and effort into not coming up with new mechanics, not coming up with one-time mechanics, but instead putting that effort and energy and brilliance that exists in R&D into using the best mechanics from throughout Magic's history. If anything, I feel this will be the theme of Dominaria. Not just flavor and lore and nostalgia shoutouts, but mechanic shoutouts. The favorite mechanics 
flashed back, and yes, I mean flashed back, one of the most popular non-evergreen mechanics there is. Things like landfall, yeah, we just had cycling, but who cares? Bring it back again. Bring back our most popular mechanics and do them as best you can for the best gameplay experience. At the end of the day, more so than nostalgia, more so than artwork, more so than gimmicks like Planeswalker cards, what it's about in Magic the Gathering, I'm going to say this throughout the year because this is the make or break year for Magic, but I'm going to say the phrase, it's the gameplay, stupid, and that's what it comes down to. Never, oh, we need a new mechanic. No, you have the best, you have 25 years of mechanics. Take the best and do great things with them. I am going to stop short of saying that this set will have no new mechanics, but if ever there was a set to introduce no new mechanics, it would be the 25th anniversary celebration set on Dominaria. But even if there are a few that are new, I think that returning mechanics is going to be a theme, is going to be something we embrace, and it's not just going to be some random one like Absorb. It's going to actually be the most popular mechanics from throughout Magic's history. Oh, an extra credit prediction of a sorts? I bet they do one card, just one card in this set with banding for giggles. And if they do, this to me shows they understand the importance and value of humor and joy in gameplay and will be a huge sign to me that magic is headed out of the stagnant waters of repetition and abiding blindly to rules of cookie cutter sets and instead is looking to make the best gameplay experience possible instead. One card with banding, it's about the gameplay, stupid. But my number one prediction and the most important prediction for not only Dominaria, but for Magic the Gathering in terms of its gameplay going forward is just that. I predict we will finally see a return to powerful Magic the Gathering gameplay. We have gone in recent years for more and more complex gameplay that doesn't actually make the cards more powerful. It looks like VCR instructions are written on most cards, but what it ends up saying at the end of the day after all this complexity is target creature gets plus one plus one or something that has no impact on the larger collection of cards such as that. This needs to end and I think it's going to end and we're finally going to get to be able to play magic again. Not going, set, to set, making each one less powerful than the one before it. But rather, we are going to see, and I'm saying it here, reprinting Lightning Bolt in standard, reprinting Doom Blade in standard, reprinting Birds of Paradise in standard, cards that were the core of this game for a quarter of a century, but were removed to water everything down, to make everything less fun, less enjoyable, less powerful, while making room to simply add needless complexity. We're done with that because it's destroying the game. And my number one prediction is we are seeing a new era, one where the defining cards of magic will finally see a return. Am I right or am I wrong? Only time will tell. But now I want to hear from you. What are your predictions, pessimistic or optimistic, for Dominaria? Let me know in the comments below. And as this set is revealed, as Wizards' game plan is made apparent, we will see who's right and who's wrong. Let me know in those comments below what you predict for Dominaria and beyond. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.